What's going on guys? Wanted to walk you through a Gibson Les Paul headstock repair. This repair is a project I picked up on my own. Looked easy enough to repair and then as I got through it, realized it was one of the more complicated headstock breaks. But let's go ahead and get into this. We're going to use some tight bond wood glue and get this headstock glued back on. I've actually got a really good clean surface to glue on. I test fitted this. A number of times to see how it fit and it looked actually pretty good so we're going to use the finger and just get the glue all over the place take some of that glue and put it on the headstock as well again I'm going to just slide it on clamp it down so I know it's on and then run a couple additional clamps on each side and clamp it down I could tell I need one more clamp on the center there, so we'll just make a slight adjustment. Pop this on, and when I pop that on, you can see just a little bit more glue squeeze out, which is perfect. I'm then only really missing one chunk off the back, and we're just gonna cut a sort of star diamond, I don't know what you want to call it, square out and just replace that wood. So I'm going to be using a Bosch router. I'm going to create a template. I've got a quarter inch just upcut bit, spiral bit. And we're going to cut out the template. Here it's just a square I actually did this twice. I did one one inch square and I didn't like that so I went a little bit bigger. So this is my oldest tool in the shop. This was my grandfather's jigsaw. The one who kind of got me into all of this. So we're going to cut that square out. As close as we can to those lines. We're then going to get a file and make sure it's all cleaned up and about the approximate size that I want it. So I'm going to clamp this down so this box I made clamps to the headstock and then I clamp the board template to that sort of box that has a single screw in the middle on each side so that way you can see just how it looks underneath and we'll just take out the perfect amount. This isn't a bearing bit. It just has a flat spot that I'm using on the template. It's not going to cause me any trouble. Double check how it looks. And after that first route, we look good. And come back with the chisel, clean it up a little bit. And here is where the crack was just a little bit longer through the top part. And I wanted to just use a bigger template and clean up that one spot where the crack, uh, I didn't like it. But here I'm using the chisel just to sort of even it out. I had one spot of the crack that I wanted to widen out a little bit with the plug that I'm putting in here. So I widened out the template just a little bit, reset up my jig, and made it a little bit bigger. One of the crack edges I didn't like. So I had one piece missing from the center and then one of the edges I didn't really like all that much. So we just extended this from an inch to about an inch and a half, a little bit more gluing surface, a little bit stronger piece of a wood. There's the cleaned out route. And we'll come back and take a piece of genuine mahogany and try and match that grain up. Try and get it to look the best that I can even though it's repaired. So I'll cut that out, sand it so those corners fit, and we're looking pretty good here. Nice and tight. Clean out just a little bit. Use 
you want it tight but not so tight that it doesn't move as soon as you add a little bit of wood glue it swells so there's a sort of perfect amount of glue that you want on the piece so I'm gonna clamp it down just need one good clamp push it in and now we have totally reinforced the headstock I actually let this dry for a while, almost a month. I want to make sure it's stabilized before I start doing anything else to it. Got a couple different tools to clean up the rest of the block then. Spoke shave, carver, spoon knife. I'm just trying to get some traction. I went back and forth, the knife kind of worked. And then this spoke shave did most of the work as I was playing around. Chisel to get it clean. And we got a file. We'll file that down a little bit more. And then a little bit of sanding. Not too much. So we'll get it flush and clean. And then what I decided to do is take the finish off the neck completely so I could get a smooth, consistent finish. And this is one of those satin finished Les Pauls. So I wanted to make sure the neck felt smooth the whole way up and didn't have sort of a mishmash of finishes. We'll then begin to sand the headstock, get it clean, get ready for some filler. So we're using 120 grit, getting that surface smooth. Make sure it's looking good. And then we'll sand the whole neck off so we get a consistent finish and feel. Try not to remove much material of wood, but that's just bound to happen. Add a little bit of tape as we get ready to add a filler. A little bit more sanding around the heel. Had to scrape it actually, it's kind of a pain. So we started at 120, moved up to 320. And then once it's pretty clean, we start to add some filler on the headstock had just a couple pieces that weren't doing it. The worst is when you're missing chunks out of the headstock, you've got to use filler or super glue or epoxy or, or something to clean up that edge where you're missing the chunk. So this is wonderful or wonderful wood filler. We let that dry for I think about a day and came back the next morning sanded it flat and that corner right there is the tricky corner I should have colored the filler to match a little bit better so once you sand, you'll have a couple spots. I came back, added a little bit more filler. Again, let that dry 24 hours, came back, sanded it. And you're pretty good at this point. Clean out that truss rod cavity. Make sure you're gonna get nothing to interfere with that truss rod motion. And then we're gonna Again, use their Wonderfill filler, but we're gonna add a little bit of brown dye. And I know it needs to be just a little bit darker than the wood, help fill those pores. Put it on thick, let it dry, and then you come back and sand it off once more. This, I think, is really gonna match the back of the body Luckily, I have done this a bunch of times with colors, and it matched spot on, actually.
really want to make sure you've got the filler where the repair is. And then you're going to come back with 320 and sand off so you just fill the pores, add ha have that little bit of a tint. You want to make sure that filler dries, let it dry for a couple days before you get to this final stage. And then with that 320 you just clean it up, scrape the binding again, make sure that binding is clean and white. And then we're going to add a sanding sealer. This is Mohawk sanding sealer. I'm going to make sure it looked okay. Looked pretty good. Matches the body. You can see that patch looks great. See how smooth we are here. Nice and clean. Posted some of these tease pics to Instagram. So we're going to come back with a frisket and the frisket is going to mask the inlay. We're going to put frisket material over that, let it dry and then chip off the paint once we paint it black. I actually did this three times because the first time I screwed up the frisket, frisket. second time it didn't look right and then this is the third time so edited a lot of that out but we're going to go back with some stumac gloss put on about eight or nine coats let that first one go on light and then come back and just do heavier progressive coats you want to sand by by that third coat get it flat but don't go over the frisket just want to make sure you've got a nice coverage and that chipping out that inlay doesn't have any issues. So let that dry for about 24 hours and then I came back with my X-Acto knife and you just slowly chip away at the frisket material and reveal the Gibson inlay. This takes about a half hour. It is labor intensive. And so fast forwarding it is the only way really to handle watching all of this. You can see it in time lapse how long it takes. My advice to you guys when you do this is to do it for the majority. Walk away, come back. Your eyes get goofy after looking at it for a while. And then we're going to come back with some Stumac Nitro Gloss and get that cleaned up. Sand it a bunch of times so it gets a nice smooth surface. This is that Acilix sanding sheets. You can see a little bit of where that filler is up on the upper left side. And as I added more progressive coats, I got this evened off. This is the final sanding then. We went up from 600, 800, 1500. And then we are ready to buff. So my buffing compound fell and I'm using a little bit of a buffing compound here. Clean up that wheel, get a mask on, wear some goggles and just buff that gloss. Spend about four or five minutes doing that. It's looking pretty good. You're gonna have to clean off some of the buffing compound once you do that. And then we'll drop the logo on here. So there was a vendor in the UK I found that had a nice sticker. I have not gotten my silk screen working yet, so I need to do that. Do that one of these days. Reinstall the tuners. Plop on some strings and we are good to go. See how nice and clean this is. Having a drink as we 
finish it up here. And we'll give you a clip. So now that it's all done, I'm just waiting for the new truss rod cover to come in. I ordered it, but it was back ordered. The repair actually looks really nice. The wood matches up pretty good. The finish is very similar to the finish that Gibson had on this. It's uh, that satin feel. Two things that were a pain on me as I'm sort of reviewing my work here at the end. The coloring didn't match up here perfectly. When I put the filler in, I had one spot that needed a little bit of filler. I thought about putting a piece of wood in and I didn't have enough to do it. So I used some filler because it didn't want to have like a huge, another seam running through here. That coloring came out just a tad off. And then on the headstock inlay, I got it cleaned up perfectly except in like two or three spots I can see where it's not perfect. That's more me than anything else. But we'll list this on eBay. I paid uh, 1100 almost 1200 bucks for it. We'll see where it goes for. It's got some zings and dings. Obviously, it's a 2018. Uh, but the repair came out nice. That chip out really just needed a little bit of TLC. And one thing I do like is that the coloring of the filler came up pretty close to the coloring that they used. So close. Another headstock repair project, guys. The only thing I was thinking about when I originally bought it was I was gonna change the color to a blue and route out for humbuckers and everyone said, no, don't do that. So that was my one thought I had when I bought it. Now that I've been sitting on this too long, it's time to let it go. So just another video on a repair. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.